Alright, welcome back everybody to episode 2 of the Minecrafters Bee Breeding Guide slash tutorial. In this episode, we're going to go over some basic frames, a bee elizer, cross breeding. i um, going to tell you uh, why it's important to keep a set of purebreds. And we are going to attempt to get some common bees up in here. So, let's take a look at where we left off. We got our little bee station here. I replaced our bee houses with three apiaries instead of the bee houses. Um, we got some bees loaded up in here. What do we do next? Well, first of all, just like we ended the last episode with, we talked about the space for frames. And frames are really important when you're breeding bees because they can enhance a lot of different aspects of the way your bees either mutate or produce or so on and so forth, their lifespan, the whole nine yards. Um, so we're going to make some frames and we're going to put them inside these apiaries. But what kind of frames could we possibly make? Let's take a look. There's three real, real basic types of frames. The first one is an untreated frame, and that's just made by placing a bunch of sticks in a pattern like this and getting a piece of string. So we can take an untreated frame out. We'll take three of them. We'll put them in the first bee house, if I could get them out of here. Put them in the first bee house. There we go. And that's where the frames go. And if I grab a set of, let's say, a forest, and I'll do another forest. Okay, if I put those in here, they're going to breed. This is going to become a queen. And these are going to start slowly losing their ability. And we'll come back and check on that in a second. The frames basically, what they do is they add 20% um, pro productivity. Excuse me. They add 20% uh, productivity per frame um, per apiary. So 3 is 60%. So we're going to get 60% more productivity out of these bees, which means that they're not going to drop more drones, that's fertility, they're going to make more byproducts. There we go. We tick down two little spots there, and uh, these untreated frames took durability. So they're going to make more frames, or going to make more uh, combs and more byproducts. But that's not the best one, because these are not going to last very long. Um, so we want to make something a little bit stronger. And so the next step is going to be to make these impregnated frames. But we need these impregnated sticks. Um, so how do we make those? What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our carpenter, and I did add another one. This one's got water in it. We'll use that in a minute. You're going to go over to your carpenter, full of seed oil, and you're going to put two oak wood in a pattern just like this. And once again, you're going to make sure that um, you have a buffer inventory down here because that's what it's going to use up here because these are just ghost blocks, as we talked about. We're going to need eight impregnated sticks, and that's going to be enough to make us one pattern of the impregnated frame. There we go. We're going to take that out. And we're going to need three of these, so let's let this work just a little bit longer. We have eight more. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And very soon, very shortly, we'll have another eight, and we'll have all three. Now, you don't have to fill the apiaries with all three frames, um, because again, it increases it by 20% each time, but it's really good to have a lot of these um, inside, and it's going to make your bees a little bit more productive. So let's take a, uh, I think a forest queen, and we'll put them inside of here. There we go. They're going to breed up. And these are purebred bees, purebred mundane bees. This one's almost done. You see how much faster that is than the bee house. These are going to breed up, and this apiary should be a lot more productive than that apiary. Now, what this episode is really all about is crossbreeding. And crossbreeding is one of the most important things um, in the entire in, in your entire bee experience, basically. And you're going to really need to know and understand what your bees um, have as far as traits and how to put them together to make some really awesome super bees, okay? So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to identify the traits and aspects of each one of our bees. So we see if we mouse over the bees, it's going to tell us that it's an unknown genome for both things. We have no idea what these things contain. Oops. And to identify what the traits of the bees are, we're going to need this thing called a bee elizer. So go ahead and grab yourself some diamond, glass panes, redstone, and tin, and go over to a carpenter that has some water in it. So I recommended three carpenters in the beginning, one for seed oil, one for water, and the final one's going to be for honey, which we'll talk about soon, and put them in a pattern just like this. Let's see. Okay. 
And this is going to work just like the other carpenter that's making us the impregnated sticks. It's going to take a little while, but it's going to make us this thing called the beelizer. Now, to make the beelizer work, you're going to have to have a stash of honey. And I gave myself a, a little bit of a stash, but we did get some combs from these other. See, we got one already here, not one here yet. So that proves the point that these frames are going to be um, a little bo bit more beneficial than the untreated frames. But go ahead and grab your beelizer out of here, and I don't want to make another one of those, so I'll leave those resources in there. And we can right click and open this thing up. Now there is a lot of information in this and I'm going to try to explain it as clearly and as quickly as I possibly can. If you have any questions about it, please leave them in the comments below or on our Facebook or website page. Um, but this is going to say that you need to supply a bee and provide honey or honeydew as a pacifier to make this thing happy um, before you can figure out what it's all about. So grab some honey and put it up in this slot up here that just looks like a drop of honey. Next, grab one of your um, unknown genome bees and place them in the top. And this is going to automatically slide down to the bottom slot here. And now we really know what these things are all about. And there's a ton of information. So let me try to go through it here. The species. We have active and inactive traits. And these are really important um, because this is the main trait of the bee and this is the secondary traits, trait of the bee. And you can see that these are all exactly the same. So it's a purebred bee. They're going to be the same. Um, Species is just what kind it is. That's what uh, color appears. The active species is always going to determine the color of the bee. So this is a red bee. The active species of the forest drone is going to be forest. And if it was a hybrid forest meadows, it would still be blue because the forest would be the dominant of the two. The lifespan. Now there's there's a, a big uh, array of descriptions for a bunch of these things. If they're shorter shorter, there's there's shortest, there's elongated lifespan, there's longest lifespan, there's long lifespan, there's a whole bunch of them, but basically this is just going to tell you how long the bee is going to last inside your apiary. That's basically all you need to know. And once you get up to the top tier bees, you're going to want to make the lifespan really long and really productive, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The speed, that just means the speed that it's going to create its byproducts. For instance, honeycombs, or when we get into the more important things later on, like royal jelly or pollen, that's the speed that it makes these honeycombs. And there's a few different blocks that will tell us how fast they make these things. Pollination. This is basically pollination and area goes, go hand in hand. And this is going to determine how fast flowers grow around the apiaries, bee houses or avil, or whatever they are. Um, we'll talk about those later. Um, that's how fast flowers will grow and how fast trees will be will become affected by the bees pollination and that's for tree crossbreeding and we're not really going to get into that. Um, maybe I'll plant a few trees just to show you what it does. But the pollination is just how much of an effect um, that it has on the area around it. The faster, the better. Flowers, this is the type of flowers that the bees require. Now we're going to notice as we go along that some bees require cactus, some bees require vines, some bees require rocks, some bees require lily pads. There, there's a whole range of things um, but these are just basic bees, and that's why we were able to use that little red or little yellow flower in the beginning to make these bees happy. So this is going to tell you what kind of flowers that it needs. Next comes the fertility, and this is going to tell you how many drones that um, the queen drops after a life cycle has completed. Now, Meadows has two drones, and we're going to see in a second that Forest has three. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we're breeding Forest and Meadows, because that has a good productivity. Um, but this is a, a dominant trait, and dominant traits are always going to be in red. And we'll, we'll notice that in a second. Dominance, red, recessive is blue. The area of effect, this is just how many blocks and the radius that the bee has an effect. And like I said, this goes hand in hand with the pollination. And this will determine how closely you can plant trees or, or in what area flowers will grow, and so on and so forth. Effect, this is mainly for higher tier bees. Um, and the tropical bee actually has a has an effect that's really terrible. It's poison um, right off the bat. And if you walk too close to these bees, there's a chance that you'll get poison if it was a tropical bee. Um, tropical bees, if I fail to mention it, also drop um, maybe the third most important, I guess, honeycomb in the game, the stringing comb. That will give you um, some good stuff to help you build the apiary suit, which we'll talk about later. Um, but that's the effect it has. Bees can have really awesome effects like giving you experience. Some of them will blow you up. Um, some of them will make you stronger. There's a lot of things that bees do. 
If I take this and move it to the second tab down, it's going to tell me all about the climate that the bee can tolerate. And this climate is normal, normal, and we saw that when we clicked on the apiary before, and these are both queens, oh, well, we got some already, some forest and some forest. Uh, this is the climate, normal, normal. That's the one that we're in right now. It's going to tell you which climate the bee can tolerate. Let me pick this guy back up, throw him in there, move him down. So normal, normal, this is the preferred temperature of the bee. Um, there can be arrows up or down, here, 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 or here, telling you that it can tolerate either higher than normal temperatures, lower than normal temperatures, or higher than normal humidity, or lower than normal humidity. And uh, once we get into the better bees, we'll see that. Um, diurnal means that it, can, that it works during the day, so it can work during the day. Nocturnal means... Um, that if, if it can work during the night or not, and this bee cannot work during the night. Flyer uh, means that the bee can work during a rainstorm or while it's raining, and this one can't work while it's raining. And cave dwelling is um, that thing I tried and I guess failed to explain in the last episode when I put the oak wood above it. Um, this cave dwelling means that it does not need a clear path to the sky to breed, and rocky drones are a really good example of that. They can breed in caves. The next tier gives us possible produce, and these just give us the basic honeycomb. I really wish there was a tooltip for this, hint, 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 um, and possible specialty. And the specialties are what we're really going to want from these bees, again, later on. Now, possible mutations. Since, again, I've been playing around on the server, this is going to tell me all of the ways that um, I can use this bee to make it into something else. And we can see, we'll see here in a second, that these are going to be all common. So I can breed this with either this bee, this bee, or this bee to make common. And this is the one we're going to do here, and that's the forest bee. So meadows and forest will equal common. Um, that will only be known once you discover it, though. And the very last one is basically um, useless. You don't really need to know it. Um, this guy's awesome. Check out his articles on his site if you ever get a chance. They're pretty funny. But in any case, one and two are going to be the most important things, and this is going to tell us all about the bees. Um, this also consumes a honey every time that you analyze a bee, so 62 now from 63. And this is going to tell us all about the forest now. So it's a purebred bee, it's forest forest, so active and inactive are both the same. Um, we have a lifespan of shorter, speed slowest, so there's nothing slower than this bee. Pollination is slower, flowers are slower. There's that fertility rate that I was talking about earlier. We have a 3x here and only 2x in the Meadows Princess. Um, but since this is a recessive gene or a non-dominant trait, whatever you want to look at it as, because it's blue, it's going to be more likely that the Meadows Princess passes along her dominant 2x fertility trait. Okay. Um, area has no effect. We're going to come down here. Tolerates the same, same temperatures, but this guy can work while it's raining. So that's a good quality that we hope can get passed along. Chances are it might not, though. If we go down here, possible produce is exactly the same thing. Okay, So this is the Bealizer. It's going to give you all the information about your bees. It's going to let you know um, what biomes that you can put them in to breed them. It's going to let you know the areas, their effect, the whole nine yards um, that we just went over. Next, we're going to start crossbreeding these bees because that's really the meat and potatoes of uh, what's going on here. So we're going to get all our bees together and what we're going to do is First of all, since we know, or we're about to know, that this is a purebred forest queen, and again we talked about stacking, so these all have the same traits. We're going to bealize all our bees by just shift right clicking. Okay, we're going to make sure that we that we keep a purebred forest drone and a forest princess, and a purebred meadows princess. We're going to take them out of here and a purebred meadows drone. Okay, We want to make sure that we always have these because if for some reason we crossbreed these things to death and we totally screw up, which is entirely possible and fairly likely, we want to make sure that we still have base level bees. So I'm going to go ahead and put these base level bees back in here and we're not going to touch those again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert oblivion frames and we're going to talk about these later but basically they shorten the lifespan dramatically and cause them to breed in about 20 seconds. We're going to put these oblivion frames in here and we are going to start crossbreeding. And 
I'm going to crossbreed a couple things, and then I'm going to explain what's going on and why we got what we got. So we're going to put, actually, we're going to we're going to let them breed, and then we're going to come back. So we got a forest princess along with a meadows drone. Okay, one second. We're going to go over to my screen where it's going to show us how we crossbreed. All right, this is what we've been working on so far, um, and this is what's called a Punnett square, and it's it's more or less useful for breeding bees, but it tends to lose its value um, when you throw hybrids into the mix. Basically what we have here is I placed M for meadows, and each of these two represents the dominant and non-dominant traits of a bee. So let's say if I pull up a meadows bee, we're going to get meadows, meadows. So that's why I've put M, M up here. So this is one bee up top, this is one bee in the side. And if I breed a meadows, meadows with a meadows, meadows, the only possible combination is going to be that I get a meadows back. But what happens if I breed a forest drone with a meadows drone? Let's see how that looks. All right, so here we go. We got a much different combination this time, and I've color-coded it slightly different because something gets thrown into the mix here, and it's actually what we want from these two types of bees. You can see in the very top there, I have thrown FF for forest, and MM is on the side, so that's the one drone is the forest drone on top, purebred, and the forest drone on the bottom left or the metals drone on the bottom left is also a purebred. And if we put these two together, there's a number of different possibilities that we can get from these bees. And this doesn't accurately describe how many possibilities there are, um, but I'll do my best in this tiny square. A forest of meadows has a chance to become a meadows forest or a forest metal bee, and it also has a chance to become a common bee. And I'll show you that in one second. And that's what's called a mutation. So if we breed a forest, or a, and a meadows, which are two mundane bees, that could possibly result in a common bee. And that's what we're looking for. So since these are both the same here, 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 and here, because they're purebreds, we're always going to have the same results in, of uh, combinations. And there's really three combinations per box. So you can either get a for, forest meadows hybrid or a meadows forest hybrid, um, or a common bee. Or actually, you can probably get a common meadows and common forest bee from each of these things here. But it's going to be more than likely that the Meadows wins out because it's a, a dominant trait. Eh, and that's actually not true. Ignore what I just said. Anyways, there's a bunch of different um, possibilities that we're going to get. But they're basically all the same. And we're going to kind of stick within the same two forest, meadows, and common realm. Real problems start to happen when you breed a like forest, meadows with a um, like a modest common like disaster happens basically what happens is this business here and we're going to go over that in one second so let's take a look at what we got going on back out here and what the resultant mutation was if any of what we bred inside this apiary here we go all right so what we got was probably some hybrids and we definitely got a mutation here that's that common that's what we want to see so let's check out this Meadows Princess. You're going to always want to run these through the Bealizer before you keep going. We have our first hybrid. This is a Meadows Forest hybrid, and it says so up there on the, the top right. We have Meadows Forest drones, hybrids, and we have a, a purebred common drone. And that's really good. We want a purebred common drone, but even more than a purebred common drone, we want a princess. Now let me show you something that you can actually do here. If I put this bee and one of these bees in here, you would think maybe that I would only get Meadows drones back, but that's actually not true. Um, I hope I'm not the only one saying this on YouTube or anywhere else, but unless it's a dominant trait, the color, the actual color of the bee, I don't think really makes a difference. So don't get too hung up on what the bee looks like after it's a, it becomes a hybrid. You really want to beeize it and find out the actual information. So technically, since this is a Meadows Forest, and these two bees are also Meadows Forest, let me just make sure I got the right one. If I put these together, these two traits, the Meadows and Forest, can actually mesh with each other within the two bees and become a common again. I, I really hope that makes sense. This is not the easiest thing in the world to describe, but technically, even though these bees look very similar, they're hybrids, and so they can result in another common. And hopefully, what we can get is a common purebred princess so that we can breed it with this common drone 
and then we can move up to the next tier of common. And then we'll breed these up, we'll breed a bunch of uh, hybrids, and then we will continue the cycle. So let's take a minute here and see what we get from these two bees. All right, there we go. We have a Meadows Princess, and you can see it resulted in a forest drone, which it might not have looked like at first, but it definitely did happen. And once again, you're going to want to check these out, see what they are. So we ended up with a Meadows Meadows uh, Purebred and a Meadows Forest Drone, Meadows Forest, and a Meadows Meadows. So I'm going to try to get rid of these hybrids because I really don't want them at all. I'm going to put these back in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to skip to a chart right now. And I'm going to lay out a map for you that tells you exactly how to get to the two best bees um, that you need to get to first. They're not necessarily the best bees, but they are the most important bees. And I don't really think that's an arguable point. So let's go ahead and take a look at this chart. All right, in the simplest way that um, I thought I could do it, I have laid out the exact path that you are going to need to take to get to the imperial and industrious bees. Um, the bees on the far left of the screen, you see a meadows and forest there. Note that I have listed or have in uh, text at the bottom left of the, of the screen here that the forest and meadows drones can be swapped out with any mundane bees, okay? So you can breed, mod breed modest bees with rocky bees to get common, um, the whole nine yards. Um, any bee that's basically found naturally in the wild, you can breed together to become a common. But since we're using the metals and forest in uh, this tutorial series, we're going to just put metals and forest first. So if you breed a metals and forest together, there is a chance, as we just saw, for that combination to become common. If you breed a common and a forest drone or any mundane drone, I want to be very clear about that, any mundane drone with a common could result in a cultivated drone. Now, breed a cultivated drone with a common drone, and that could result in either a noble or diligent drone. Now, just take note here that we're always breeding with the previous generation to get the next generation. So the, so the cultivated with the common, I'm breeding the new generation with the old generation to get a newer generation, and that results in the noble or diligent, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the top line here because these lines separate and uh, you can actually get into a lot of trouble when crossbreeding um, if you happen to mate a common and cultivate it together and get both a noble and diligent. That can be disaster. But let's take a look at the top. So noble um, bred with its predecessor, the cultivated, has a chance to become a majestic bee. Majestic bred with noble, which is also its predecessor, has a chance to become an imperial bee. And the reason why we want imperial bees is so we can produce royal jelly. And that's going to be really important later on. Go back down here to the diligent bee. And the diligent bred with its predecessor, the cultivated bee, will result in an unweary bee. There's a small percentage of chance that that will happen. And the unweary bee bred with diligent has a chance to become the industrious bee. And that will produce pollen. Now, I will make this graphic available on our website for download if you want to take a look at it. But this is the basic path that we are going to take to get all the way up to the two most important bees so we can build an alveary. Really important and awesome block. All right, we're going to take a look at our apiary here. And we got, oh boy, we got a lot of Meadows drones. And you notice since they're all individually in their own little boxes, that means they all have different traits. And uh, don't be discouraged if this happens. We got a purebred here. We got Meadows Forest here. We'll put our hybrids up there. Meadows Forest, another hybrid. Meadows, Meadows. Okay, so we got a lot of different bees. We're getting a lot of these purebeds. We don't want purebeds, but we have to deal with them. So we're going to throw a Meadows Princess back in here. And let's throw a purebed Meadows Drone back in here. And we're going to try to get another common to make a common princess. Now, what can you do to further increase the mutation chance of these bees? Because you want to pound through these lines as quickly as you can. Well, one of the main things that you can do to speed things up right away is to make these things called soul frames. And they're, they're not that hard to make. All that you need is an impregnant, impregnated frame. Which we'll grab this here. We'll put some more logs in here. We'll make two more impregnated sticks. Okay, we'll go them over here. Uh, oops, if I took them, where are they? There we go, impregnated sticks. Put them inside our work table here. We'll make an impregnated frame. And then we'll click on soul frame and we'll make an impregnated or uh, a soul frame. And that just takes one. It takes one soul sand and an impregnated frame. And we'll need three of these. And what these do is increase the mutation chance of um, 
whatever you're trying to mutate the B to by 50%. And don't be don't be confused. See, we we didn't get another one again. Don't be confused. Um, that is actually not going to increase the mutation chance by 150%. It's actually 50% of the base mutation chance that it had to start out with. Let me explain. One of the greatest things um, that could ever possibly have been added into this game is the ability to go mouse over a B and press R. And this will tell you how to make the B. Thankfully, somebody had the brains to do this, and I love them for it. Um, let's see if we can find our combination here. Did I pass it? Yeah, here we go. All right, so if we breed forest and meadows together, there's a 15% chance that it's going to become a common. And so the soul frames increase this 15% by 50% each time. So you're not gonna you're not gonna get a 150% chance. Don't freak out if it doesn't work the first time because it's not. Okay, you're not gonna get a 150% chance with the soul frames, but it's gonna significantly increase the chance that these are going to have to mutate. And these frames, which uh, you will never have, or you won't have in the beginning anyway, um, are not really feasible to use right now, but for speed and for the sake of the tutorial, that's why I'm using them to breed these together faster. So we did get one one common drone. Um, that's the resultant mutation from a meadows and forest, which is two mundane bees. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to really quickly take a look at the devastation that crossbreeding um, can have if you breed two hybrids together. We still didn't get a common there. Um, and this is, this can be really, really bad. Okay. What I have here is what I think I is every combination to this thing. Let's say we have a common meadows. Okay. So do we have a common meadows? No, we just have one common anyway. So a common meadows and a cultivated forest, which is basically the third tier. So it goes mundane, common, cultivated. Um, cultivated forests and common meadows. The resultant mutations could be A, not what you expect at all, or B, maybe exactly what you expect. I have no idea, but there's so many combinations that um, this square really doesn't cut it, like I said before. So let's take the top one. Common with, let's say the bottom over here. Common with forest. We know, based on what we just learned about, that that can become a common B it could also become a common forest bee, or it could become a forest common bee. So right off the bat, we got three combinations of common. If you breed the meadows with the forest, it could also result in the common mutation or a forest meadows, which is this one over here. And the little stars mean that it could be one of two things. You just got to reverse the words. Now, oh, let's see, a common with a forest could result in a forest, I don't even think I have that one up here. Common with a forest can result in a common forest, no, right here, or a cultivated bee. And if you breed a common bee with a cultivated bee, there's a chance it can become a noble bee. Um, the common, it, th there's just so many things that could happen with these and if you manipulate it just right you can try to plan the outcome of these hybrids but it's really dangerous and that's why hybrids are not something that we really want to go into too much okay so we've kind of discovered the basics of crossbreeding we've discovered what happens when we mash two different bees together um, and uh, in the next episode what we're going to do is we're going to actually breed on camera all the way up from meadows bees to imperial or industrious bees. And I'll show you um, what I'll kind of think along the way and how I'll mash the bees together and how we're going to get all the way up to those bees because they are the key to moving any further in this breeding process. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, stay tuned for next episode where we'll talk about some extras and the um, we'll go through the breeding process and you'll be able to see that on camera. Um, and we're going to talk about lots of other great stuff like automation, alvearies, genetic mutations, and some really epic bees, okay? Make sure you check us out on all of our social media outlets listed here. And as always, guys, stay poised.